Hello, on behalf of everyone at Potatoes USA, I would like to personally thank you for the invitation to participate in your event today. I would certainly prefer visiting with you in person under normal circumstances, but I suppose this is just the reality of our world for now. And this is actually an example of one of the changes in our business activities and how we communicate. Earlier this year, we also launched our first effort to expand our communications tools with the Keeping It Current video series that quickly covers what Potatoes USA is doing and trends related to potatoes in the United States and internationally. We have now received approval from our board to launch our first potato podcast, which has begun airing monthly. And we are expanding our social media presence greatly to help you better know what is happening in the world of potatoes. Be sure to follow Potatoes USA on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. For more information on our programs and activities, John Tospern will update you on the state of the U.S. potato industry and a few of the many Potatoes USA initiatives being implemented by our team to increase demand. Thank you once again for including us and for your continued support. Thank you, Blair, and thanks to the Northern Plains potato growers for inviting us to speak to you about the potato market and about the Potatoes USA programs. We all know that a lot has changed this last year within the market, so it's very important for us to take a close look at that. I'm gonna start with last marketing year, which began in July of 2019 and went through June of 2020. We see that overall U.S. potato utilization declined by just over 5%. This was due to the 13% decline in sales to food service, as well as the increase in imports. There was, of course, a nice increase in sales to retail of almost 9%, but this was not large enough to make up for the decline. So now if we look at where these products were utilized or what the U.S. potatoes were utilized for, we see that frozen is still the predominant at 40%, with fresh at 25% and chips very close at 23 while DHI remained at 8% utilization. If we switch to sales in the U.S. market, we see that it was very important switch occurred. Sales through the food service channel had almost reached 60%, but this last marketing year went back down to 53%, while retail recovered up to 47% of total sales. This is a reflection of what happened with consumers' eating habits, or how and where people ate their food. People were eating more and more away from home. In fact, it had grown to be greater than what they ate at home. Well, this completely shifted last year, and now we're back to a situation where at-home consumption is by far the predominant way, with food service almost dropping off the chart. Potatoes were the pandemic powerhouse. People had to go to retail. People needed to buy more fruits and vegetables at retail. And within vegetables, potatoes was the product that got the greatest number of sales. When we look at potato retail sales overall, we see that this increase occurred for all potato products. Chips, which is the largest volume driver at retail, was up 7%, which equates to a very large volume increase in total potatoes moved that way. Fresh potatoes were up 20%, frozen potatoes up 30%, and dehydrated up 28%. So significant increases in the volume of sales through retail. When we drill down into the fresh retails by type, we see that there were increases across the board uh, for all types of potatoes. Russets up 17, reds were not up quite as much, but that was more due to supply issues uh, earlier in the season when this all began than it was demand. And yellows did very well. So across the board, good increases for all types of fresh potatoes. The flip side to the increases at retail, of course, was the declines at food service. We all know that there was a significant drop off in people being able to go out to restaurants, and this resulted in 90,000 restaurants, almost 12% of the national total, closing this last year. The biggest area of decline was, of course, in those off-site dining through travel, business and institutions, college and universities. Within the restaurant sector, fine dining, of course, had the biggest declines because those were the biggest impact or where the most impact was from access to the restaurants. Casual was less, mid-scale even less. And when you look at what happened with QSRs, they had the least decline. 
which is good from the, for the potato industry from the perspective of frozen pie sales. We did see a decline in frozen fry sales this last year. Significant one of 1.1 billion pounds less sold to food service. But on the positive side, we see that the biggest decline there happened in quarter two when the initial restrictions and shutdowns occurred. By quarter three, the decline was much less at only 17%. So we'll see even a less of a decline in quarter four. Potatoes still are on menus, and potatoes have still done well through all of this with those establishments that were open and with those that switched to a takeout and delivery type approach. And we all heard about how Taco Bell took potatoes off their menu. There was a huge outcry from the public, and they heard, and they are coming back on the menu this March. So we're very excited about that. The takeaway for the marketplace is that while there's been all these shifts, and adjustments, and it's been difficult, we also know that potatoes are still America's favorite vegetable. They're on 84% of all food service menus, and they're the number one vegetable sold at retail. So we still are in a very good position. Potatoes USA has been working very hard to try and adjust to these changes and to continue to get more people eating more potatoes in more ways. I'd love to talk to you about all of our programs, but in a very short time, I just want to touch on a few. Because we have domestic activities that cover the board, uh, from food service, consumer and nutrition retail, we do market research, we do culinary programs. Within the retail space, we did a very important study. It's called the Total Store Study. And it looked like at how people bought potatoes pre-pandemic, and then how they are now buying them, what is influencing them. And it's not just fresh potatoes, it's processed potatoes as well. We are getting this study out because it's important for the industry. We have podcasts through the Packer. Uh, we've been sending it out directly to the industry. So if you haven't seen this yet, please get a hold of us because there's important information here. So this is what many U.S. consumers are now feeling after having cooked the majority of their meals at home the last 10 months. They're frustrated, they don't know what new to do. So we're trying to help. We're trying to help give them new ideas, help them expand their usage of potatoes in this situation. And one of the ways that we've done this is we've produced a series of what we call Potato Pro videos that just are fun, but also educational about all the different things you can do with potatoes that you have in your pantry. Here's a look at the the video that focuses on red potatoes. What am I gonna do with you? Oh, I'm glad you asked, Meg. I have a few or five thoughts. How did you get? One, potato salad. Two, Thai lettuce cups. Meg, what's the most important meal of the day? Breakfast. Oh. Potato tacos. I heard gluten's not really your thing. How did you know that? Red potato crostini it is. And five, air fryer garlic parmesan potatoes. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, really is analogy. We are using paid social media to get these videos out to our target audience, Generation Tater, which is a broad swath of the American population. And so far, the responses have been excellent, so we're very pleased. We have not stopped doing our performance campaign. In fact, we're doubling down on helping people to understand just how important potatoes are to their lifestyle, how they can help fuel them, no matter how different it is than it used to be, it's still important to eat potatoes. So we put together some Potato Pro videos around this as well. So here's a spot that's encouraging or teaching people to consume potatoes as a performance fuel. Meg, you know what your workout needs? <laughs> potatoes. Mm. Nutrient dense. More potassium than a banana. Mm. Fuel for your day. Mm. Okay, we're taking off. In the food service realm, we're doing a lot to help restaurants and others figure out how to include potatoes in their delivery and takeout menus, how to take advantage of the cost effectiveness of potatoes. But what we're really excited about is our new Potato University that just launched. This is a platform for culinary students and chefs to learn everything they need to know about potatoes 
potato preparation, nutrition, et cetera. So please check this out because it is an important resource for culinary professionals. Chef RJ has brought together a Potato Chef's Culinary Council. This is chefs from the potato industry that get together once a month on a call and work to collaborate around how they can help improve potatoes' role in food service and in the culinary space. It's been very successful so far. We have a broad range of chefs involved, but if you have a chef or a culinary professional in the potato industry that you'd like to get involved, please have them get a hold of Chef RJ. And then with all these changes and the inability for us to come and meet with you in person, we've tried to launch a lot of new ways of communicating. Uh, as I think many of you have seen, our Keeping It Current videos, which are short videos that help you to know what we're doing. We've also just launched Potato Cast, which is Potatoes USA podcast. It's available on Spotify, through Apple, or on our website, Potatoes USA. We've also just launched new social media targeted at the potato industry. We've had our social media targeted at our consumers for many years, but now we're trying to reach you all through social media as well because we know you're there. So if you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, look up Potatoes USA and begin to follow us. Thank you very much for letting me speak to you today. Again, if you have any questions or need any additional information, please contact any of us at Potatoes USA. We'd be happy to reach back out and help you however we can. So thank you very much and do take care.